This video is brought to you by ThePuzzler.com. So far, you have probably been asked to find the square roots of numbers that are positive, like this example. Can you find the square root of 25? The square root of 25 is equal to 5 because 5 times 5 is equal to 25. But what if I asked you to evaluate the square root of negative 25? Would it be 5? But 5 times 5 is equal to 25, not negative 25. So it can't be 5. Or what about negative 5? But negative 5 times negative 5 is also equal to 25, just like 5. In fact, try any number in the real number system and you will find that the square of that number is positive. So there is no real number that will square to give us negative 25. Well, mathematicians finally came up with a solution to this problem. After much effort and tries by many mathematicians, it was Euler in the 18th century who finally came up with the modern way of finding the square root of a negative number. He came up with the following notation. i is equal to the square root of negative 1. The imaginary unit, also known as the iota, opens up a whole new world of numbers called imaginary numbers. Instead of the real number system, which is all the rational and irrational numbers that we are so used to. Here, we can take the square root of negative numbers, opening up a lot of possibilities. The square root of negative 25 is equal to the square root of negative 1 times 25. This, in turn, is equal to the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 25. We already know that the square root of negative 1 is equal to i, and the square root of 25 is 5. So, our answer can be simplified to i times 5, or 5i. The square root of negative 25 is equal to 5i. In fact, we can apply this method to obtain the square root of any negative number. In general, the square root of negative x is equal to the square root of x times i. But this is not the only use of the imaginary numbers. Some uses of the imaginary numbers include quadratics, the Mandelbrot set, in calculus, and like we discussed, taking the square root of negative numbers. Here are some examples of imaginary numbers. i, 2.38i, negative i, 3 fourths i, and 0.01i. Can you find the value of 5i squared? Pause the video for more time. Five i squared can be rewritten as five i times five i. We can further rearrange that to get five times five times i times i. We know that five times five is equal to twenty five, and i times i can be written as i squared. So we have twenty five times i squared. Since i is the square root of negative one, when we square that, we get negative one. So, we have 25 times negative 1, which gives us negative 25. 5i squared is equal to negative 25. Imaginary numbers also help us solve equations that don't have real solutions. Let's take a look at an example involving a quadratic equation. Can you find the solutions to this equation? x squared plus 1 is equal to 0. 
Pause the video for more time. Using real numbers, there is no solution. If you want, try it out yourself. So, we have to resort to imaginary numbers. Subtracting 1 from both sides, we get x squared is equal to negative 1. Taking the square root of both sides, we get x is equal to the plus or minus square root of negative 1. Well, the square root of negative 1 is equal to i, so x is equal to plus or minus i. Our solutions are plus or minus i. Imaginary numbers are not really imaginary. They were once thought to be impossible, thus they were given this name. It is now a fact that these numbers are real, but the name has stuck. You would imagine that the powers of i would be complicated, but they actually cycle through a nice pattern. The powers of i reiterate every four powers. Let's take a look at these four powers. i to the power of 1 is simply just equal to i. i squared is equal to i times i, which is equal to negative 1 because i is the square root of negative 1. i cubed is equal to i times i times i, which is equal to i squared times i. We know that i squared is equal to negative 1 and i is just i, so we have negative i. And i to the power of 4 is equal to i squared squared. We know that i squared is equal to negative 1, and when we square negative 1, our answer is 1. Now, let's try to expand this to the other powers of i. i to the power of 5 is equal to i to the power of 4 times i to the power of 1. We know that i to the power of 4 is just equal to 1, and i to the power of 1 is just equal to i. So, our answer is i. Similarly, i to the power of 6 is equal to i to the power of 4 times i squared, which is equal to negative 1, and i to the power of 7 is equal to i to the power of 4 times i to the power of 3, which is equal to 1 times negative i, or negative i, and i to the 8th is equal to i to the power of 4 times i to the power of 4, which is equal to 1 times 1, so i to the power of 8 is equal to 1. Did you notice the pattern? The powers of i repeated themselves. This happens because we kept on taking out i to the power of 4 and decreasing the power to a number from 1 to 4, which we already know. The i to the power of 4 that we kept on taking out does not matter because that is just equal to 1, so that does not change the product. In general, i to the power of k is equal to 1 if k is equal congruent to 0 mod 4, or if k has a remainder of 0 when divided by 4. i to the power of k is equal to i if k is congruent to 1 mod 4, or if k has a remainder of 1 when it's divided by 4. i to the power of k is equal to negative 1 if k is congruent to 2 mod 4, which means that when k is divided by 4, the remainder is 2. And i to the power of k is equal to negative i if k is congruent to 3 mod 4, which means that k leaves a remainder of 3 when it's divided by 4. Let's apply powers of i to a problem. Simplify i to the power of 720. Pause the video for more time. Since 720 is a multiple of 4, we know that our answer is equal to i to the 4th power. i to the 4th power is equal to 1, so our answer is 1. The numbers that we looked at in this video are called pure imaginary numbers. There is also something called complex numbers that are a combination of real and imaginary numbers. But that is a topic for a future video.
Here are some problems for you to try on your own. What is i to the power of 619? What is the square root of negative 361? And what is the square root of negative 125? And is i squared a real number? Don't forget to write your answers to these problems in the comments below. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked or enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe so you can get notifications for my future videos and be sure to hit that like button. See you in the next video.